Hi, today let's talk about mixing skin tones in painting. Hello everyone, my name is Florent Farge. In this video I want to talk about painting flesh tones. I'll focus mainly on oil painting, but the same principles apply just as well for acrylics and gouache. Alright, let's start. When we talk about color, it's important to be as precise as possible. If you just say, this is the wrong color, it doesn't give you any indication of what to do next. So, to describe color, I refer to its three main components, value, chroma, and hue. Value is used to represent the distribution of light and shadow on the surface of the object. It correlates with the intensity of light coming from all the different parts of the object. Value is a key aspect of color because it helps represent the volume of a form and brings three-dimensionality into the painting. Next, we have chroma. To make it simple, we can say that chroma is the degree of purity that your color has. For instance, a color close to a neutral gray has a very low chroma, and conversely, a very bright, vivid color has a high chroma. And finally, we need to understand hue. Hue is what most people generally talk about when they think about color. A hue is an element of the color wheel, which is comprised of all the different wavelengths of the visible spectrum, as in the rainbow. So, how can we describe skin coloration now? Its hue is in the range between yellow and red. We could simplify it by saying it's some sort of orange, but of course, due to its very low chroma, Skin has a color that is far from what we think is orange. In fact, it is closer to gray than it is to actual orange. Try to find the right balance between red and yellow. This will depend greatly on the light source and on all the differences in complexion. It's also interesting to know that all human skin types share, for the most part, the same hue and chroma. As you can see on this picture, the biggest difference is in their value range. If you follow the right principles and pay attention to value, it is possible to paint almost any skin types with the same palette. Alright, so now that this is said, let's talk about the palette that I recommend for you. The choice of a palette is very important. It reflects every artist's own sensitivity, aesthetic taste and method. But don't think that you can use anyone else's palette just because it works for them. Your palette has to be thought strategically. Don't go buy hundreds of paint tubes just because you heard that some artist uses them. You have to know the function of each paint tube that you use. I work with an earth palette composed of burnt umber, raw umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, ivory black, flake white and titanium white. I also use some transparent colors both for mixing and glazing. Elizarin Crimson, Burnt Carmine, Transparent Yellow Ochre, Transparent Red, and Ultramarine Blue. But don't feel that you have to get these specific colors. Let's have a look at the basic principles of color mixing. After that, it will be up to you to decide what palette is best for you. So, to make a flesh tone, we first need to get the right hue. As we said before, we need to create some kind of orange. I am using burnt sienna, which is some sort of red orange, yellow ochre, and the lizarin crimson. Now that we have this, it is still way too chromatic. But how do we make it less chromatic? Two solutions here. The first solution is to use the properties of complementary colors. Let's have an example here with burnt sienna and this space blue, which are close to complementary. I will not go into too much details here, just know that when you put complementary colors together, it creates a slightly tainted grey, and if we go towards grey, we lower the chroma of the mix. If your mix is orange, its complementary blue will shift it towards grey, hence lowering its chroma. If it's red, green will create the same effect, and so on. As you can see, if I add white, the mix in the center is a lot less chromatic. And don't worry, even if we don't have perfect complementary, 
you can still get a similar effect. Just remember this, if you mix a warm color with a cool color, you will change its hue, but you will make it less chromatic at the same time. It's really hard to master, but it's something to keep in mind. There is another solution to make a color less chromatic. It is simply to mix it with another less chromatic color. This is why an earth palette is nice for flesh tones. In general, it is low in chroma. Burnt amber is ideal for the skin. You can also use black and white, but as you can see, the gray produced by ivory black mixed with white is very cool. It is almost blue. This is why I prefer using a white with burnt amber. It has a low chroma but is a lot closer to the natural warm hue of the skin. And that's it. Now that you know what makes the base of your flesh tones palette, you can choose what you want to add more variety. In my process, I use the closed palette. The idea is to premix a scale of colors extending from the darkest dark all the way to the lightest light of your subject. The principle is to always have the same scale ready at the beginning of each session, and that way maintain the unity of the work. Working with a closed palette is a great strategy to get the values right on your paintings. Working this way is not necessary, I just find it logical and convenient. If you struggle to get a strong sense of form in your paintings and have trouble with lights and shadows, you should give it a try. I always do a small color study before I start. This step is important for several reasons. It helps to preview the painting and anticipate the difficulties. It's a good time to experiment and try new things. But the most important is to find the right closed palette. I always take my time and do as many studies as I need until I find the 9 premixed color that I want. At the beginning, I focus mainly on values, using the advantage of my first palette. I try to be as structured as possible in the first strokes. I start with the darkest dark, because this is the only color that I can be sure about. It's at the end of my value scale, so I can't go wrong. Then, I lay out the surrounding colors and compare the relations between the two. Reproduce the same kind of comparison all the way through the work. I keep the unity in mind. Remember, painting skin tones is not about finding the right colors like you would on a coloring book. It's about comparing colors next to each other. This is why you need to be very strategic with the first colors you use and how to organize your palette, because you will use them to key the rest of your colors. I slowly build the form, going from the darkest part of the shadows to the surrounding values. I pay attention to the terminator line separating the lights from the shadows and paint the transition carefully.
I also remember that I have to bring variety into my painting. The limitation of a closed palette is that it can have too much unity and create a dull looking skin. So from time to time, I add a little yellow, leather and crimson or a cold grey to the mix. For the inside of the shadows, I don't have to be as precise. It is always a good idea to keep some transparency to suggest the reflected lights. I will also use glazing later to refine colors even more. Glazing is a big part of my process, but it could be the subject of a whole other video. In this color study, my goal is not to create something perfect, but to see if the relation between the colors is coherent. But I will get the same process into my final painting. To finish this video, I just want to give you a principle that I always respect when I paint the skin. 1. The shadows can be transparent. 2. The lights and highlights have to be opaque. 3. Never use pure white for the highlights. If you can't get your light strong enough, it is certainly because you use transparent paint or you brush the same area too many times. 4. Don't try to just find colors, compare them. Five. Start with a strategic color that you know with certainty. Alright, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you want to share some of your techniques, or if you have any questions, you can use the comment section below. You can also check these videos to see examples of my method. So, back to painting everyone, and have fun!